In this lecture today, I would like to present you community arts project within memory politics in Belgrade. Of course, it's not official cultural policy. It's more how artists, specifically those who are dealing with performing arts, are creating new memory politics and how they are really challenging politics, official politics of oblivion. Belgrade is a city of multiple interrupted identities. Uh, the old Celtic origin of the city is still hidden in its first name, Singidunum, and this name was kept later on by Romans, and the Roman military fortress is still, uh, how it say, visible partially in contemporary Belgrade, in the ruins of uh, National Library and in the City Library of Belgrade. Belgrade of, from medieval time it's hard to be seen. It's developed and burned several times through history when Slavic people came and settled in the Balkan Peninsula. But this medieval city of Belgrade was a wooden city and in these war times it was burned 66 times in history. The, what we can see today is partially the remnants of Austro-Hungarian Empire on one side and oriental city of Turkish origin on the other side. These two components are still present in contemporary history. But then, after the First World War, another big interruption with the city passed and the history came, and the Belgrade started to be developed as a new, modern, contemporary capital city of a big kingdom of Yugoslavia, with huge boulevards, and cutting old Turkish mahalas, small neighborhoods, which has been developed in Oriental period. After Second World War, a new interruption uh, appeared. Belgrade was heavily bombarded during Second World War, first by Germans, then by uh, Allies, uh, because in 1944 they wanted to uh, ruined the German occupation military force. So after this bombardment, Belgrade was a pretty, I would say, a ruined city. New socialist power wanted to create a new city on the other side of the river, and a socialist city created by the Corbusier urbanistic plans appear. This city was characterized by its cosmopolitan character, by its wish to to be uh, not only city capital of Yugoslavia, but also one of the capital of non-aligned world. So numerous, <clears throat> I would say, symbolic buildings, squares, huge squares, huge public spaces, parks, friendship parks, etc., has been created. Nights brought war, split of Yugoslavia, huge isolation of Serbia and Belgrade. After five, six years of embargo of international isolation, Belgrade youth and artists wanted to recuperate the lost time, the lost memories, and they created uh, many projects, wanted to uh, revitalize this cosmopolitanism of Belgrade. And during the protest against the regime of Milosevic, in whom performing artist has been, has been having a leading role, the major transparent, the major slogan was Belgrade is the world. But in today's cultural life, theater spectacle has a very special meaning in the politics of remembrance. Uh, because the city, as James Donald is saying, is always a space already constituted and structured by symbolic mechanism. We think that these contemporary efforts of theatre artists are of extreme importance as stimulating collective memory of the city, as um, giving uh, more contents to locus memoria, places of memories. So what are theatre art production in public spaces today? Of course, there are some ambiental theatre projects uh, in Kalemegdan Fortress, specifically during summer theatre festivals. There are many in-situ projects 
site-specific projects by young alternative group happening in different corners of Belgrade, in different neighborhoods. There were also a lot of actions according to the techniques and the models of theatre action of Augusto Boal, such as invisible theatre projects. But I would like to focus on memory revival dialogue projects, projects which are directly making links with the city history, with uh, its lost inhabitants, with its lost uh, uh, multicultural past. And of course, there are some populist, popular projects in the open squares, spaces, like parks, but that's not going to be the topic of uh, my presentation today. Of course, there are several controversies of public arts policies. First, uh, when, when we speak about public arts policy, about creation in the public space, is it for a new identity construction? But what identity we want to reinforce? Is it nationalistic or cosmopolitan Belgrade identity? Because both of those identities are presently, but also historically, fighting since 19th century. Is it also a public art event? Is it aesthetic challenge or artistic statement or marketing issue? Is it kind of a commercial event? Is it meant to be community relation building? Or it's pure uh, neighborhood aestheticization. Let's bring some more entertainment and fun in our neighborhood. Is this action meant to raise awareness, to provoke politically? Or is it, or contrary, something which is performed to calm down to be more a representation of power or wish of the power to offer something to population, not uh, to prevent them thinking, raising critical awareness and, uh, how you say, expressing their own needs and desires. Also, not only that those controversies exist, we can say that public space is not something which is uh, uh, very simple, unique, same. It can be space of social interaction, mahal, classical pieces of oriental city where the people used to gather together, used to communicate and exchange. It can be also space of identity, specific locus memoria, developed urbanistically to keep memory on certain past, building past, like monument on Chukur Chesma, where the final liberation against Turks started. Or is it space of debate? Usually, kafana, kind of restaurant, old-fashioned type, was this public space where, once upon a time, men, but today, all of us are gathering to discuss politics, to discuss changes. Or is it just a commercial space, space of purchasing, inquiring, what used to be Charshi, Charshia, Turkish uh, bazaar, Suk, now became shopping mall on the outskirts of the city. But public space can also be space of entertainment, or it can be old corzo, space for showing up, space for representation. This, this character of corzo was still kept in our pedestrian Knez Mihailova street, where people are gathering just to meet other people, to meet friends and so on. In the same time, we can say that contemporary cultural policy, not only that they take care about public spaces and being present in public spaces, they also incorporate a different layers of politics of memory and musealization. Restoration of old centers today of inner cities, it's a norm in urbanistic policies of renewal and cultural policies are in a certain way giving content 
what is going to be the period which we really want to remember? In Belgrade, for example, because whenever we want to construct something new, the old layers are appearing, the Roman period layers, medieval layers, Ottoman time layers, or 19th century urban bourgeois layer, etc. And most of the time it's this period which we want to remember and to keep. There are numerous festivals organized as festivals of memory, memorialization, or festivals which are keeping certain traditions. Dach Theater recently organized a very important festival due to its 20 years of existence, trying to link a world theatrical uh, alternative from Peter Schumann, Eugenio Barba, with their own uh, efforts. There are also different kind of memorializations uh, linking to historical events which are happening not only throughout the city of Belgrade but throughout the Europe. I will remind you, for example, on numerous festivals devoted to the Jewish culture, for example, in Poland today. But past became also a kind of heritage industry. Retro became trendy. Retro became fashion, furniture design became now in a style of 50s, even 30s, and so on. Radio nostalgia became a paradigm of this trend. Memory literature, diaries, confessional prose is especially popular in the Balkans already since 80s because in this kind of prose many things which are not possible to be said in official literature has been told for the first time. But in visual art projects, uh, such as are also known in the West, the memory, personal but also collective memory, reappears. One of the most famous projects of Marina Abramovic, Balkan Baroque, from Venice Biennial 10 years ago, was in fact, in the same time, a uh, recapitulation of its of her own family history, family history which comprises all the division of the Balkan Peninsula, family which was uh, religious on one side and extremely communist on the other side. On both sides, pretty, I would say, intolerant toward other opinion, and then with the contemporary uh, happenings of the 90s on this cruel war, on this mountain of the bones which she was cleaning in her performance in Venice. Or also a very famous project of Mirjan Vajic, Yugo Museum, in whom he uh, recreated all the artifacts of the Yugoslavian period uh, as digital sculptures, putting them in a virtual digital museum of called Yugo Museum. Uh, the history we are thinking, we were living it daily. And the performances which has happened throughout the 90s has been in a certain time uh, in order to raise critical awareness, but also to focus, to gather public attention on political events of today. Such was the representation of Macbeth, the theatre performance of Center of Cultural Decontamination in front of police cordon happened in January 1997 in Belgrade during the citizen for three months citizen protest, four months students protest which lasted a little bit longer so that students could achieve all what they have been asking for. So in January, the, the protest started in November, in January police wanted to stop it. And Milosevic gave a precise order that is walking through the city of the opposition, parades of the opposition has to be stopped.